We'll be doing strobe lighting today. Even though I'm most known for uh, the smaller light sources, we'll be looking at the larger light sources, okay? The theme of today is the whole kit and caboodle, which I love that title because I didn't have to come up with it. And it really says everything. Um, a lot of times when you start moving into the larger light sources, you look at kits, right? If you buy an individual light, it's going to cost you a lot of money. But if you buy a kit, companies pull these together for you so you can get a lot to get started and then move into their system, okay? Which is really what they want you to do. And it's what I want you to do because I'm being sponsored here by Hensel and this is a Hensel event. However, um, despite that, any technique that comes through the door here, you can use for speed lighting or for any other brand that you're looking at. I really like the Hensels. Uh, truth be told, I started my career with Hensel eight years ago. I bought a two light Integra kit and I loved it. I hauled it everywhere. Then I discovered the smaller flashes and then my small flash career kind of took off. So I wound up selling my Hensels. Then I found a need for strobe lighting and I went to another brand which was very incredibly expensive. So I was buying pieces at a time. And then when this arrangement came up with Hensel, I jumped at it because I know the product and the product is absolutely fantastic, okay? Um, they're made in Germany. I know that question came up earlier uh, before we started. They're ma solid aluminum, made in Germany, and they're a fantastic um, uh, strobe light. So what we're going to do is a quick slideshow about what you should be looking at and looking for when you're looking at your kits, all right, to purchase, to get into the larger light sources. It's very short. Then we'll start shooting with Rochelle, and I'll do at least five to eight different lighting looks, all with what comes in the kit, all right? So this gets you up and running really quickly and really easily without having to spend any more money uh, up front. Because we're all in photography, we all know it's about spending money. <laughs> all right, and you're in the place for it, right? We are in the place for that. So without further ado, let's move forward. Welcome to the D&H photo event space. Um, this is, presentation is the whole kit and caboodle. And I really like that title. I am really uh, digging that title. Okay. All right. Uh, this is the shameless self-promotion part. This is me. Um, Robert Harrington Studios is my company. Robert Harrington Studios at WordPress is my blog site. Sign on to my blog. Um, I used to be bad at it, but I'm making a concerted effort to blog five times a week. All right, so get a full five days, take the weekend off of lighting technique, gear review, all kinds of crazy stuff coming up. All right, the hardest thing that I find is trying to find something to write about that I haven't written about before. But if you follow me, um, you'll get all kinds of tips and techniques, all right, on large lights, small lights, natural light, everything. All right, my Twitter account's Bob Harrington too. My Facebook is Robert Harrington. I am a anti-Facebooker, so you will barely find me on there. Um, I have a brand new book out this year. It's called Photographic Lighting. It's by Ammonite Press. Uh, it's available at camera shops or Amazon or barnesandnoble.com. I have a small speed light book called One Speed Light 16 Looks, and I'm currently writing for Shutterbug, which is really cool. I, I wrote a book, and I saw the magazine on the shelf, and I was more excited about that than writing a book and seeing that on the shelf. Okay, the strobe kit. If you're looking to get into the market for strobe lighting, this is what you're going to be looking for. Kits usually have two to three lights, which is a great way to begin, okay? Master one light before you move to two or three. But if you buy a reasonably priced kit, you get everything to get started, all right? Stands in a carry case. You get umbrellas normally, sometimes even a softbox if you're lucky. Some kind of trigger system, all right? The higher end kits are going to have a trigger in them. Ellen Chrome Skyport, Hensel has its own. Uh, Strobe Wizard, Profoto has its own. Okay, um, and the kit allows you affordable entry into a system. So once you choose into that system, you have the full range of their modifiers that you can go to, all right? And these companies really do a great job in offering you a lot to choose from. One of the pieces I really like in the Hensel system is their beauty dish. It's really amazing. You take the central disc out and you can replace that with a grid. So you can literally get directed light through the center of the grid and have a lot of fall off light from the outside edges of the beauty dish. It's really interesting. 
Okay, what to look for when you're buying your lights? Quality and consistency of light, right? Does the light maintain its color temperature throughout uh, every time it flashes? All right, is the light consistent? Does every time it flashes, is the light the same all the time? Okay, you want fast recycle times. You want to be able to shoot your subject, hear the audible beep go off, and go shoot again. Fast flash durations. If you want to um, freeze motion, you want a, flash, a strobe with a, a faster flash duration to freeze that motion. Because remember, even at the slightest movement, you're moving, your subject's got a little movement going on, and guess what? The earth is moving. So everything's working against you. Um, look for a good power output, 300 to 600 watt seconds. Okay, you'll find that strobes are measured in watt seconds, and that's normally what you'll see. Uh, these are 500 watt second units we'll be using today. It's right in the middle. It allows you to go low on power, like in the, into the realm of speed lights, and go high on power into the realm of overpowering the sun. So you get a lot of light out of these units. Um, let's see. Low watt seconds. I don't know what that, that, that is there for. Uh, let's pass that one. Strong, durable construction. I'm going to show you this right now. Hensel asked me to do this. Um, this is an uh, Hensel Integra 500 free mask. It's made out of aluminum. Okay, no plastic. Made in Germany. Everything's made in Germany. And then, hey, Michelle, can you go over for a second? Peter said I could do this, but I'm a little crazy. I'm a little... <laughs> I'm a little nervous, so I'm going to hold on to your shoulder. And I'm going to stand on this unit. See that? Look at that. No, I would not stand on some of the other units in the marketplace. Okay? <laughs> so that is a durable unit, right? Knock on it. Awesome. <laughs> okay? So look for durable units. Uh, look for availability of modifiers. Okay? Don't buy into a system where you can't get a softbox readily. Say you buy into a system and then suddenly you get all your stuff on a Friday. Following Tuesday, a chute comes in, and you need a three foot by four foot softbox. But your system comes out of some crazy place that you don't even know where it's located on the planet, and you can't get a modifier. Okay, suddenly you're kind of out of luck. Choose a system where you can get modifiers quickly, eat, and easily. All right, um, and use a replaceable bulbs. I really like these units because you can you change the flash tube and the modeling light yourself. Unit does not have to go back to the factory or to any service center to be um, have the tubes replaced. If you're in the field, you drop it and you break it, and I'm telling you, I've done it. You can change the flash tube yourself in the field. Okay, here's what we're using for today. This is the two light kit that I put together. Hensel sent me a three light kit, but quite honestly, that was a little too heavy and bulky to drag down on the train this morning. Uh, I trained in from Connecticut. Uh, and I trained them with my camera bag and my Hensel bag, and I just trolleyed them along behind me, and it was great. We're using the Hensel 1000 watt second free mask light kit. We'll talk about free mask uh, towards the end. I have two 500 watt second Hensel free mask lights, uh, two air, cu air cushion stands, that should say stands, not tans, uh, and a roller bag, a soft box, a grid reflector, a 30 degree grid, two umbrellas and two umbrella reflectors. And we'll talk about that as I start changing a lot of modifiers around. Uh, a strobe wizard, a PC cord, and a 32 inch 501 reflector. So when you purchase this kit, look what you got. You've got a lot. We got a soft box. They gave us this great little soft box to get started with, okay? And we're gonna use this at the end for over and under beauty, because that's really a great uh, tool. But you, this is perfect headshot light, okay? You can even do a full body with this. Next thing they give you is the trigger. You get a great radio trigger that will operate three lights, or you click on the all button, and you can operate all the lights in your setup. You can change the power ratios up and down right from the trigger. Okay, very similar to if you're a speed lighter, very similar to a Fotix Odin or a, a Pocket Wizard Flex. All right here, and it's all given to you given to you when you open the box. One thing I really like that they give to you is a sync cord. If you have a light meter, now you have a nice sync cord. And what you do is you plug this into your light meter, plug it into the back of the unit, 
or top of the unit rather, pardon me, and you can take your meter reading, okay? And then just set this aside and use the strobe wizard that you're given. All right, so it's a dual purpose here. And you don't have to shop around for a sync cord because you're like, well, what do I need? Do I need PC on one end? What's the other end? Quarter inch mono or is it um, mini phone? You wind up calling B&H and asking somebody and they're like, we don't know what you have. You have to kind of figure that out yourself. Here it's given to you. So one of the great things about this particular system is that right out of the box, you can go right to work. And that's really outstanding. Okay, being able to just set up and go to work is great because you won't want to waste your time. You want to learn your system. And on top of that, the most important thing is you want to get clients because you all want to do what? Make money. Make money. Say that louder. Make money. There we go. Now you sound more convincing. You guys didn't sound convinced before. <laughs> you really didn't. Absolutely. So you got to come back here and spend your money, right? Because you're going to find you're going to need that beauty dish one day or you're going to need that softbox one day. But there's no reason to go ahead and buy all of that. We can, you can work just with this. All right? And that's the gist of the program. That's, that's the idea behind this program. Um, I developed this right after uh, I developed a relationship with Hensel, and I really think it's a great way to teach um, what you can do with very little, right? And that's always my goal, do the most with the least. Because once you spend that money, that's gone, and you have this great product, but you've got to figure out, now what? Right? It's always that second question. Uh, now what do I do? Well, you need to get clients because we need money because we need to keep mama happy, okay, and pay the mortgage. <laughs> All right, so let's see what other slides do I have. Oh, that's it. Thank you. On to shooting. Um, again, please keep your questions to the end. I will keep an eye on the clock. I will shoot straight through till uh, 1.30. If you have a question on a specific lighting technique, a specific style, a specific piece of gear, Please just hold off till then, all right? Then I'll run through the whole thing, and we'll wrap it up, and you can all go downstairs and buy Hensel lighting kits. <laughs> They're all waiting for you down there, actually. <laughs> all right, so let's get out of the slideshow. And we will go right to shooting. All right, I'll open up my software. Uh, for my software, I'm using Capture One Pro 7. I just upgraded to Pro 7, so uh, if you guys are using Capture One this and haven't upgraded yet, this is the new interface. And I'm on the camera tab, so when I turn my camera on, I should be ready to go and tethered, ready to rock and roll. All right, so for our first look, we're going to do something hard, hard and fast and really kind of fashion-y looking, all right? Then we'll make a quick test shot. So if you know me, you know that my starting shutter speed and aperture is usually what? Anybody? Excellent, excellent. One one twenty fifth of a second at 5.6. I'm not going to use a light meter. We're going to do what we do normally. We're going to chimp, right? We're going to take our first shot, see what we get. I have my light set to the lowest power. Okay, I'm going to do a quick test. There we go. All right, cool. So she has her wrap on. We'll go uh, black against the gray. Now this should work. There we go. Okay, what do we think? I think she's a little dark. What do you guys say? A little underexposed? Let's push our power up. We'll leave exposure the same, and we're going to push our power up here. Two, three, four, five. We'll go up about a half a stop. Okay, ready on? Perfect, just like that. Much better. What do we say? I like it. I like it a lot. I like those short drop shadows. I think it looks fantastic. Great exposure. Great color. Look at that eye shadow on her. That is amazing, isn't it? All right. So we have a simple one light setup. I'm going to move my light a little closer over to here and flatten that. Flatten that drop shadow out. Look at that. What do we think? I'm the, I like it a lot. I really like that. Um, I don't know. You have to wait to the end. Um, okay, ready? So what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you how to give her a short, a longer drop shadow. I'm going to have that drop shadow fill the frame. Rochelle's very skinny, so she kind of fills the frame, but I like to bring a little more uh, dynamic uh, part to the pose along her right side. 
come off the background maybe a foot and a half on. That's about good right there. Okay, so she moved into the light, so now I have to adjust my light back down or adjust my exposure. Because if she's moving into the light, I'm expecting exposure. So I'm going to return my light back down to low power setting, um, which I think is about 200, this is a 500 watt second light, so it's probably 75 watt seconds, it's very low. All right, and we'll put a nice shadow behind her. Look at, see, perfect exposure. I moved her a foot and a half forward and dropped my power back down by half a stop. Now I like that look. I think it's a really great and fun look. I'm gonna move my light over to the right just a little bit. We get a little more shadow going. Make sure you aim your light to your subject. Ready on right there, perfect. All right, really cool. I want you to bring your right arm up like this so I can get some of that shadow. Yeah, that's a ticket. What do we think? I'm down, I love that look. I, really, I would love to shoot it um, against white instead of gray, but that's a great, simple, one light look that you can offer your client, right? Really easy. You can do a lot with a little in a very short amount of time. So we have two looks within only a few minutes. And all I did was pull her off the background, and that's it. Now what I want to do is get a little more creative. I'm going to bring Rochelle forward. Come on, hon. Right about to there. Right about to there. Uh, a couple more forward. Yeah, right about to there. Um, mm, over that way. Okay, that's good. Okay. Now Rochelle has her part over her left eye, and that means that. I want, a light to, I want a key light to this side. I want to open up those shadows from underneath her hair. And that's what I want to do. And what I want to do is I want some hard light. I want some really, really hard light on her face and give us something, a lot of contrast, a lot of shadow detail, okay? So I'm going to aim my light just about to, to her. She's going to come to me, and then she's going to look up and around into the light. I'm going to drop this down just a touch on, right about to there. Yeah, and we're going to give ourselves a... Uh, a nice hard shot. Now I'm going to stick with 1 1 25th at 5.6 because if you're just starting out, that's a great jump off point. All right, right there, hon. Okay, that's hard and contrasty, but that's too hard, isn't it? That's way too hard. She has moved into that light so far that my aperture and shutter speed are not working for me now. But I can't go any, any lower on power. So where do I go? Aperture, excellent. So I'm at 5.6, shall we go to 8? 11. 11. All right. You guys woke up. Great. <laughs> Let me write to 11. <laughs> much, much better. Much better. Look at that shot. That's that, right? That's a fashion magazine shot. Look at that great head shot. I want you to turn a little more into me this way. Yeah. So get more of your face into the light. There we go. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Okay, one strobe light, one reflector. And that's it. Right? Look how beautiful that is. It's, it's sharp. The color is fantastic. There's no clipped highlights. All right? And this is bare head strobe. There is no modifier on here. There is nothing going on. This is bare head strobe. All right? I really like this look. It's a great fashion-y kind of look. Uh, you can do a lot with this. My lens has a little bit of um, vignetting going on, so I have a little bit of the, of the vignetting naturally into the back corner, which I really like. All right, I can correct that later, but I kind of like how that looks because it's been given to me. Right? If you shoot outside, you have a light source that's given to you, and what's that? Sun. Sun. Excellent. So if you bring a strobe light outside, you have how many light sources? Two. Two. Outstanding, and what did one cost you? Nothing. Ah, oh, it's even better. <laughs> so there we have it, right? You want to do the most with the least, okay? Why don't you turn this way, yeah? And then bring your head around. There we go, because I'm going to shoot you to this side. I'm going to open up. I changed her side. Open up. Look at that. That's even better. I mean, that other shot was great, but when she brings her face now into the light, look at how beautiful that is, okay? I want you to stay, yep, I want you to look up to the, yep, there we go.
Look at that. Absolutely spectacular, right? And we use one light source and one seven inch reflector. And that was given to me in the kit. So I haven't had to go out and get anything else yet. All right. And we've gotten creative as well. We've only been at this for like five or 10 minutes. Not even, I think I've spoken more than I've shot. Okay. When you live your life at 1 1 25th of a second, you have a lot of free time on your hands. All right. Let's be honest with each other. If you have a lot of free time on your hands, wow. Okay. I want to take one or two more in this look. I want you to turn and look to the to your yep that way. I'm gonna really tighten this down. Wow, look at how strong that is. Look at this shift over that way just a touch. Yeah, right to there. Swing your shoulder back down to the left. There we go. What do we think? Love it. Love it. Love it. Who said that? <laughs> awesome. Awesome. We have a fan. That is absolutely spectacular. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add some fill light. Can I have that, Mariel? Yeah. And I'm going to have, let's see, I'm going to have Mariel hold this so I can get an upper body shot. So Mariel's going to come in. Come to her right, hon. Yeah. And bring that right, almost right up close. A little bit closer right to here. Okay. So we're going to bring some fill light onto Rochelle's side. What I'm going to do is this. There's an old adage in photography that says, don't light your subject like we're doing, light around your subject. So I'm going to turn my strobe light just a touch to the left and bounce it off the white reflector. All right, and see what we get there. The light should be softer, a little creamier, all right? All right, look at that. Now we're getting somewhere. I really don't like it yet. You guys? I like it, but I'm not too cool with it yet. Not, not you. We have to move our reflector a little bit. Bring the reflector, nope, up this way. And yep, just like that. There we go. Wow. What do we think of that one? Oh, yeah, much. <laughs> all right, now the light is so much softer and creamier. It's not as hard. I'm literally lighting off the edge of the reflector and lighting back from the, re from the 32 inch reflector. So the 7 inch reflector is giving my hard light, my round reflector, which both were given to me in my kit. All right, look at the shot that I got right out of the gate. All right, let's do one or two more. What do we think? I think they're spectacular. You guys, look at that. Yeah, really fantastic. What a great, just a great look. Simple, easy to execute. It's going to get even easier. I have that. Have a seat, hon. Thank you, Mariel. Can you hold that for me? Okay. <laughs> All right. It's great to have Mariel here and have an assistant, but guess what you do? This is what you do when you have someone come into your studio, except you want to see them. You want the audience to see them. <laughs> All right, now I am a headshot photographer, so that I love living um, right in this area. Oh, um, so that's the problem with the software, I apologize. Um, I upgraded the software, so my software wants to keep upgrading the camera list. All right, let's give it a whirl. You ready, Hon? Yeah. Perfect, just like that. Wow. I even surprise myself sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it even looks almost like she has a hair light on her on the left edge. See that? No, I'm happy. You're happy? Who's, yeah. who's, who's happy? <laughs> you are. <laughs> What's your name? Pat. Pat, I'm glad you are happy. Because if you're happy, we're happy. Look at how beautiful that is. Look at how stunning she looks under that incredible light, right? And we have one light, two things, and they came in the kit. All right? Okay. Now we're going to shake this up just a little bit more. And we're going to use the grid, honey. You have the grid? Now the Hensel kit is one of the only kits that I've seen that comes with a grid. This is a 30 degree grid. And what we're going to do is really we're going to tighten the light completely by putting it into the reflector, okay, and making it very sharp and hard on her. But we're going to keep the 32 inch reflector up. 
and just kind of narrow that beam of light just the reflector and to back in and try and shut down some of the background light. If we go back one photograph, so if we look at the background, we have some background light going because this, this light is literally leaving the 7 inch reflector and wrapping her and going onto the background. So we have a touch of that going on. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to tighten this light down completely. Same thing with the reflector, hon. Camera's up. We're ready to go. See what we get. All right, now look at that. M look at the background. Background's completely gone. Okay. I don't like the shadow on the left side of her cheek, but we do have some fill light coming in from the reflector. All right, this is really hard and contrasty. So to get rid of that shadow, I think I'm going to move. Can you step back just a touch on? Yeah, right about to there. And we'll aim the light a little more at our subject. Yeah, and bring up that reflector. Okay, you okay? <laughs> <laughs> Don't knock yourself out. <laughs> and there it is. Yeah. Much better. Okay, much, much better. And we knocked down all the light just about in the background. So you had this beautifully lit uh, headshot that's with a dark background and really a nice, really a nice, nice look to it. What I want you to do is stay just like that, and I'm going to see how far we knock the background down and what this looks like on your face. Wow, look at that. Okay. I'm going to take that from you, honey. I don't need that anymore. So hold on, you take that, Mariel. So I'm going to bring this a little more to the front. Let's see if we can't get some little more frontal light on Rochelle. And we'll shoot this way. That is spectacular, isn't it? Seven inch reflector, 30 degree grid. And again, it was what was given to me in the kit. I really enjoy this kind of lighting. This is my kind of lighting. If I have my choice, it would be dark in the background all the time. I love this kind of light. It's so incredibly dramatic. When you, she's separated from everything. She has a black wrap on. It's like everything is about this. That's why I love being about a headshot uh, photographer. Everything is this right here. Right? I can get so much from this. Okay. So what I want to do now is go kind of back to the basics a little bit. And we're going to get rid of um, the grid and the reflector. And we're going to go to the umbrella, right, hon? Yeah, let's go to the umbrella. Mariel's going to swap this out for us, put a reflective umbrella on. And we'll do something simple. All right? So you do, you get your nice headshot client come in. And that person wants a simply lit headshot, and we'll do it with a simple umbrella. I like this technique a lot. And the umbrella, you just open it up, and you go to work. Soft boxes, who's had to build a soft box? Anybody? Yeah, OK. Who's had to build a soft box on location? In the wind, <laughs> right, when it's cold. <coughs> and you want to be inside drinking coffee, right? And nothing's working because your hands are cold, and you can't get the things into the ring, OK? Uh, so that's a problem. Yeah, you got it. That's perfect, huh? Yeah. We're going to do a simple one light 45 by 45 degree portrait. Then we'll bring our reflector back in. Then we're going to add a hair light in the back. Okay. Now, I love the umbrellas. Umbrellas are so incredibly simple. And they just seem to work, right? There's no problem here. Oh, look at that. That's my 45 by 45. I'm going to take a quick test shot of Rochelle and see what we get. You guys like it? Okay. All right, so make sure everything's back on. Here we go, ready on. Okay, that's a little dark for me, a little blurry. I think I missed the focus a touch. Okay, so it's a touch dark, so what are we gonna do? We're gonna open up a little. We'll go back down to maybe eight. We'll go up a full stop. Okay, make sure I can focus on your eyes right there. And there it is, right? The light's a little creamier, it's a little softer, it's smoother on her skin, okay, than it is on the previous shots. The inside of the seven inch reflector is silver lined, so the light's a little more contrasty coming out of it. The lining in the umbrella here is white, and when light hits something white, what happens to it? Go ahead, speak up. 
No, reflex. Mm, okay. We're getting there. We're getting there. Okay, keep going. When light hits something white, it gets warm and soft. Okay? It gets warm and soft. So if you look at the difference between the previous photos and these photos, the light's a little contrastier. Here it's creamier. It's softer. It's softer on her skin and that. Those beautiful cheeks. All right? I mean, I, I wish the editor from Vogue magazine was here because I could sell this job. I mean, come on. <laughs> All right, do you have the reflector? Yeah, can you bring it in, Mariel? Yep. Now we have um, white on white. You have to come to the front, come down a little bit lower. Yep, right about to there. That is perfect. And there we have our beautiful, warm, creamy light all over the place, right? Can you turn this way a little bit, hon? That's it. Take it. Come look straight on to me. There it is. All right, there we go. That's absolutely spectacular. Okay? Everything's coming through beautifully. It's sharp. Right to there, hon, one more time. Excellent. I like these monitors. I think my work, work look fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to turn to that side. Yeah, and swing your shoulders around a little bit this way. Drop. That's it. Right there. Yep. Wow. That's even better. When she drops her shoulder like that, look at that shot. Okay, ready on one more time. Yep. Look to me. Yep. And then, hang on. Now look away. L'Oreal ad. What do we say? Right? Rock on. <laughs> okay, so we have one umbrella, one reflector. All right, we have a beautiful headshot going. I'm going to back you up just a little bit, hon. Yeah, a little bit more. So I can get a little more of you in the frame. That's a ticket right to there. Yeah, we'll go kind of to back up just a little bit more, hon. Yeah, we'll go a little more right about to there. Yeah, can you just follow her down? Yeah. Now she's got moved kind of far away. So she moved far away. I'm being limited by my extension cord here. All right. Um, that's too dark for me. What do you guys say? Yeah. What are we going to do? Yeah. Open up again. We'll go back from 8 to 5, 6. One full stop. You can go over that way both just a touch. Yep. You too, Mariel, right there. Yep. Cross the arm. Can you back up just a little bit, Mariel? Right there. Right there. Perfect. And we got coming through. How are we doing? I'm liking it. What do you guys think? All right. I like the short shadow even. Okay. Some people don't like the shadow, but I kind of like the shadow. I love that shadow detail. Right? I mean, that's great stuff to get that beautiful detail going. Okay. Come on up. You can have a seat, Mariel. You stay right there, hon. I want to add a second light. And this is a really a great fashion kind of look. And this is a great technique to take with you. If you purchase a kit that does not come with the reflector, right? So now you have, we have all these great shots where we have these key light and reflected fill light. We have this beautiful, warm, creamy, or contrasty light on our subject. But let's say you get a kit or you have one home and there's no reflector in it. And you're a photographer without a reflector, which should not be. Because what is the first thing you buy after you buy a camera? Lenses. Nope. <laughs> Lenses come with it. <laughs> That's just a given. All right. I mean, oh my God. Okay. So um, you buy a reflector because that's the basic tool of the photographer. Besides your camera, right, which we all need to be a photographer, you need a reflector because you can, once again, you can do so much with so little. But what if you buy one of these kits and you don't get a reflector in it? And let's just say for some per chance crazy reason, you guys don't own reflectors. I, oh, <laughs> I don't want to hear, oh my god, I gotta buy one. I have to go buy one. Okay, because Bob said I have to buy a reflector. Um, we're going to take a reflector out of the equation, but do key and fill at the same time. All right? I'm a huge YouTube fan, okay? A great tip that I give photographers who I teach is um, 
find a photographer you like, then go on YouTube and Google his, or YouTube his name and behind the scenes. Right? I like high-end fashion. Even though I don't shoot it, it's my favorite thing ever. And I Google people or photographers like Mario Testino. Okay? I Google Annie Leibovitz. I Google people who are shooting for high-end magazines. Most of the magazines I shoot for aren't Vogue and Vanity Fair. But what I do is I find a behind-the-scenes video and I see how they are shooting it. And guess what? I found a video of Mario Testino shooting Heidi Klum with one light and one umbrella. Right, that was a cover of Vogue, I think, uh, a year or two years ago. One light and one umbrella. Same thing we just did here, except his name is not mine. Or my name is not his, okay? But this is a, a fashion kind of look, and this allows you to get reflected fill, or beautiful fill, without having a reflector. So what I'm going to do is my backlight will be my strobe, and I will lower this. So it's pretty much just behind me, all right? And this is my reflector. At low power, I'm going to send light like this around my subject. OK, can you back up just a touch on? Get right about to there. Now I'm going to bring in a second light. All right. And my second light, I will turn on. I again put gaffer tape on and marked it number two because I have a very short memory. And this light, we're going to push up one full stop. So my power setting here is the lowest, five. I'm one full stop higher, six here. So this is my key light, and this will be my fill light to fill in those shadows that I get. All right? I'll set my light on the atypical and traditional 45 by 45 degree angle. All right? This is channel two. So I'm going to shoot my first shot with channel two. We'll see what it looks like. Then I'll shoot my second shot with both of them going and see what it looks like. Then we'll adjust our power up and down or our exposure. OK? Let's see. Let's take our initial test shot on channel two only. One, two. Yeah, can you back up just a touch on so I can get you yeah, right about to there? Oh, it didn't fire. Yeah, channel two. Let's see. Let's test it out. Let's make sure everything works. You go that time? Yeah. All right, good. Wow. OK. So what we have is we have, it's kind of bright for me. What do you guys think? A little bright? I'm sorry? A little too bright? So we're going to knock down exposure from 5.6 to maybe maybe two-thirds of a stop. What do we say? Full stop? Full stop. We'll go to aperture of 8. Ready, Han? Much better. OK? A little under for me, actually. All right, but hold on. So now we have some shadows. Look at the shadows on the right side of her face. See those shadows? Now I'm going to turn on channel 1. This is channel 1. This should give me a touch of fill light. So only this one should fire. OK, look at that. I have a touch of fill light. Not a lot, right? Just a little bit. Do we like it? I think it's a little under. And we're going to push this up power. Maybe we'll go up half a stop. So here I will push my button, my power button, go up to 5.5, half a stop. Let's see what we get. Much better. Much, much better. This is the fill light that's going to bring up the shadows that the reflector would have done. Now I'm going to push my trigger to all, and we'll shoot both lights. What do we say? Let me get key and fill. There it is. OK? And I can raise my power on the fill as well and open up those shadows just a touch more. Maybe we'll go maybe two more clicks to 
maybe a third stop less here. All right, I'm kind of far away from her on the fill light, kind of far away on the key light. Let's see what we get. You turn to that side. Yeah, that's a ticket. There it is. You've gotten the same effect of having a reflector without having to use a reflector. Even though we all own one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case we didn't get one or get one in the kit that we purchased, this is a great way to do it. You have key light and you have fill light all in one. And because you're wrapping all of this light around you, the photographer, and the room and the subject, you're getting more light on the background. So it's like getting three lights for the price of two, okay? If I moved her up to the background, I could even make it brighter, all right? Which I think we may even do. Why don't you back up just a touch, on? Huh? We'll bring our key light up just a little bit, all right? Roughly four, five, four, four and a half feet away. We'll bring our fill light right behind me. Okay, we'll shoot right here. What I want you to do is that, um, that ultra look. Let's give me four or five. Yeah, there we go. Also, draw inspiration from what you see in magazines or what you see commercially, okay? Uh, there's an Ulta store where I live. I walk by the Ulta store, and there's a big 30-inch by 40-inch print of the model, and I'm staring in the eyes. I'm going like this, looking to see where are the lights set? How did they get that lighting look? And guess how they did it? You're looking at it. They used a couple of parabolic umbrellas. They didn't use kit umbrellas. It's the same thing. A key light with an umbrella and a fill light with an umbrella. Okay? Always try to reverse engineer the photograph. See where everything's coming from. Okay, ready on? Let's, let's knock out five. How are we doing? Wow, look at that. You guys are all so quiet. What do we think? <laughs> okay. Look at how amazing that looks. Look at, look at how amazing that looks. You see how amazing that looks? <laughs> okay. Uh, I can full screen them. Hang on. I can full screen them. I think that I can. Um, I have not really learned this software yet. Let's see. Window. Mm. There it is. It's okay. Absolutely, I'm um, beautiful, right? Spectacular. Key and fill, two lights, two umbrellas, no reflector. We've taken our reflector and put it away for the day. Okay? Look at that. It's absolutely spectacular. Great color, great skin, great look. Print that 30 by 40, hang it in the Ulta store. I mean, you both get checks. <laughs> 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 All right? Okay, hop back over there. How much you step over the wires? Okay. A couple of things I want to do now with the umbrellas, and we're, I think we're going to move to a softbox. How are we doing on time? Oh, we're doing really well on time. All right, one of the things I teach with an umbrella is the collapsed umbrella. Anybody ever seen this? Okay, I know Fran has. Anybody else ever seen the collapsed umbrella? It's awesome, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really cool. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this light off and we're gonna take out, um, we're gonna take this out for the moment. You can pull that down, hon, huh? and lower it just a little bit, okay. All right, so the collapsed umbrella is one of my absolute favorite things to do. Because you get an umbrella, and you get all this big, beautiful, crazy uh, wraparound light that flies all over the place, right? So now you're thinking, maybe I want to control that, all right? So if you have a 20 by 30 soft box, right, a box that controls the light, you can put a grid on it, and you can really aim and control that light. But let's just say you don't have one of those, because that didn't come with the kit. 
What came with the kit was your umbrella. So we're going to shut down a bunch of that backlight simply by shutting down our umbrella. Let me just unloosen this. Look at that. Okay. This is an aha moment. This is a totally, this is an eye-opening moment for a great many photographers. All right, and this is a great technique. Because all you do is shut the umbrella down, and what have you done? You've closed down all that light, okay? And you've avoided the expense of a 30 by 40 softbox, and a new speed ring, and a new grid, and uh, try to find a client to help pay for that, okay? Don't just buy things because you want them. Because I've been to that party, I bought things just because I wanted them. <laughs> they don't do me any good, they sit in my studio or in my home office, but you buy things because you want it, right? You jones for that big, soft, beautiful light. But here you have it, it's been given to you. All you need to do is contact me and let me show you how to use it. Okay, so now we have our collapsed umbrella. I'm on channel two, all right, come up forward on this touch, right about to there, all right, and I'm gonna bring Rochelle, I'm gonna lighter right to here. And let's see what we get. I always love the, uh, the uh, let's see what we get, the, um, the, the mystery, right? The mystery. Excellent. Thank you. That BA in English literature is really working for me at the moment. Um, I like the mystery. What are we going to get? Okay. Is it going to be overexposed, underexposed? Do we care? No. Why? Because we can delete it if we don't want it. But we want to see what we're going to get. Just like that, hon, let's see how dramatic we can get this light. Oh, I get to take it out of the viewer. Oh, it came in. Perfect. What do we think? Okay, it's a little under, but let's look at the quality of the light. Okay, so it's under. What are we going to do? Open up. I'm at an aperture of eight, so we're going to go full stop or two-thirds? Two-thirds stop. F6.3, right on right there. What do we think? We are back to the seven inch reflector, but lacking the contrast, okay? Because the light out of a white umbrella is warm and creamy, all right? It's the difference between a silver, something silver lined and something lined with white, is that the silver adds a bit of uh, coolness and contrast to the image, and the white adds that creamy smoothness, okay, to the light. And that completely changed everything. We changed the light on the background, right? The previous photos, it was bright because our fill light was just adding a bunch of light to the background. This darkened the background. If we pull Rochelle a little further this way, we can get that background almost black. Let's stay right there, hon. I'm running out of room. There's <laughs> <laughs> not a lot of room to work here, so um, using a long lens is really kind of tough. But I am a headshot guy, so I love, that's where I love to live, right there, all right? Now if I turn her into the light, turn right up and into the light, hon, yeah, right there. What do we get? Perfect. Look at that. I want you to look just beyond. Look at your photo. There we go. And one more. Now turn to me. Right? I, that's, someone said to me, you should never crop the head off somebody. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> are you kidding me, really? All right. One of the things I encounter as a headshot photographer is a lot of my clients wonder why I chop the head sometimes. And I chop the head sometimes because, are you kidding me? <laughs> right? Look at that shot. That is absolutely spectacular. Okay? I always give my clients a lot to choose from. I'm very, very generous when, with the people who come to me for uh, headshot work and I will offer them all of these looks. If Rochelle called me up and said, Bob, I need headshots for my portfolio, I would say, great, we'll do a sitting, and she would get this look, and she would get the previous look, and she would get head, full head, no head, she would get everything to choose from, okay? Because who knows what her agent wants, or her rep wants, who knows what someone's gonna want down the line. But if I'm um, generous and I give her multiple looks, she has a lot to choose from and a lot to have in her portfolio. Okay, 
Always be generous, right? You want the work, you want the return work, <coughs> be generous, okay? Share everything, uh, give your client more than they expect, and they will always come back to you, okay? I have a lot of clients who do come back to me. Thank God. <laughs> yes, yes, thank God. <laughs> okay, we're kind of winding down on time. Oh, we have plenty of time. I want to do one more look with two umbrellas. All right, and that look is going to be cross-lighting. And we're going to cross-light, you just throw that other umbrella on, thanks, son. We're going to cross-light with both collapsed umbrellas. All right, so our key light is going to be uh, on the back of Rochelle. I mean, the key light will be here, and the hair light will be behind Rochelle, but a collapsed umbrella. Okay, got that in okay, hon? Uh, you're going to have to excuse me for one minute. I have to plug this unit in uh, over here. Yeah, can you unplug me over there? Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, excuse me, hon. Okay. Yep, come right back to where you were. <laughs> okay. Yeah, right there. That's good. Okay. All right, we'll raise up our light, and we're giving ourselves a nice hair edge and separation light. So I want this light just a touch higher and an angle. Make sure that's closed down nicely. That should give us our key and our hair light, and let's see what we get. Um, I'm going to even these out at the moment. What I'm going to do is make both of these the same power. I'm going to go to 6. This is 6.2. We'll make this one 6.2. We'll make them even power. We'll see what we get because we don't care what we're going to get. We're going to adjust as we go. And then we'll see what this whole thing looks like, okay? With her dark hair, we may push the background light up a little higher, maybe to 6.5 or to 7 because her hair has a beautiful red-brown uh, coloring to it, all right? Okay, honey, ready? I didn't hear anybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now look what we did in the background. We opened the background up with that second light, but we contained our light with the collapsed umbrella. We have that beautiful hair and edge light on her right side. Okay, my key light and my hair light are at the same power setting. All right, I may decide to push up the hair light just a touch, uh, but I think I kind of like it. There's no burned or clipped edges, right? It's really a nice look. I don't know if I like the lack of um, lighting on the right side of her face. For a shot like this, I think I want some reflected fill. All right. Yep, bring it up as close as you can, right about to there. Yeah. There we have it. Right, there we have it. Still a little hot on her left. See, on her right cheek, you have that steep angle. So what are we going to do? What's that old adage in photography? You guys forgot it already? You know, there's a quiz later. <laughs> you can't leave the room without being quizzed on this. Don't light your subject, light around, around your around. subject. Okay, what am I doing here? On my key light, I'm lighting my subject. Now I'm going to light around my subject and move the key light more towards the reflector. Get more light on the reflector and I'll get more reflected fill. All right, right? Yep, just like that, huh? That's perfect. There we have it. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Look at that. We have all that beautiful shadow detail. We have the hair light on the right. We have reflective fill on the right, her right cheek. That beautiful light coming in. Um, nice soft shadows. All with two umbrellas and now our reflector. All right. The collapsed umbrella is really a great, great technique. Really simple and easy to execute. All right. I'm going to do one more. Keep your head like that. Look right to your photo. What do we think? Oh, I missed that one. Oh, no, I didn't. Still coming in. 
Okay, now she turned her head. Now look what we have, a little, edge, a little rim light on her face right there. See that on the right side of her cheek? Because she moved her head to the right. We caught some of that light. And that's a happy accident. I want credit for it. I said, ooh. <laughs> What's your name? I want credit. What's your name? Tim. Tim. Tim said, ooh, he gets the credit. He is the man. <laughs> he is the man. <laughs> he is the man. Look at that beautiful shot, right? Yeah. OK. I have not used anything. I haven't bought anything beyond the kit. And that's the key. OK. We're going to do, um, do over and under beauty. Next, I love this technique, on, especially on women. It's very flattering. Okay, have a seat on. And I do this with, I like to do it with a soft box or two. Now, depending on the kit that you do purchase, wherever you get it from, and um, hopefully here, of course, um, and what comes with it, some companies give you the, um, a soft box, and some companies do not. This company, Hensel, does, and they do a wonderful job with a great, uh, economy level softbox that's really just wonderful. It's like 16 by 20. You can do almost a full body with it, right? Perfect for a headshot. If I were to do full body on Rochelle, I would probably drop this down to maybe here. Maybe we'll do that at towards the end. All right, but what I really want to do is over and under beauty because she has the cheekbones for it. Look at those cheeks. It's just they're mm -hmm. spectacular for that, that beauty shot. Okay. We're gonna keep our hair light going. We're going to keep that hair light up and running, all right? We'll use that collapsed umbrella. Why not? It's there. Okay? Stay right there, hon. I'm going to pull this out, and I'm going to take out my umbrella. Oh, yeah. Let me all drop this down so I can see what I'm doing. See, that always helps. Take off the umbrella reflector, and we'll slip on the soft box. All right, now I'm going to twist my softbox like stick this, aim it down, and raise this up. All right, now this is headshot work. Yeah, I'm going to actually, I'm going to give this her, her a hole because it's going to be too. Yeah, that's it. I know you've done this before, <laughs> haven't you? <laughs> Okay, nope, you're going to drop that down right underneath your chin. Yep, just like that, okay? Down a little further. All right, about to there, you have to fix your necklace. Yeah, okay, good. All right, so now this is uh, over and under beauty. What I'm doing is I'm lighting her across the top of her head, forehead, down the front of her face, and reflecting this light back up again. All right, I'm as high as I can go on my light stand. Um, just for a quick eyeball. I'm going to raise this light up just a touch, maybe. No, I say we give this a shot. What do you think? Yeah, let's rock it out. <laughs> Why not? Okay, so we're starting at 1 125th at 6.3. All of my power settings are still the same. See what we get. Okay, it's overexposed, right? Too, too bright. It is fat. <laughs> it is. It, I want you to look dead right at right into the camera. Don't look at your photo. <laughs> I want you to look right to, look right into the camera, straight in. Stupendous, right? It's over way overexposed. Who cares? That thing is awesome. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm okay with that. <laughs> Oops, I missed it. Hang on, sorry. There we go. Even that's cool. <laughs> okay, we have a lot of contrast going on. I want to drop the power down so we get a, a correctly exposed shot. What do you guys say? Yes. Okay. So we're going to go maybe, we're going to boost our aperture up to 11. All right. We'll get a lot of depth of field here. Here we go. That's a well-exposed shot. And you're seeing how the light's interacting with her cheeks, right? Right here, you have that beautiful little shadow going. Okay. You have um, 
You have a key light on top, so you have some shadow detail underneath the eyes, under the nose, under the lips, under the chin. And the reflector is bringing up a lot of that. Okay, let's take one or two more. Okay, on. We're into the range of beauty photography now. This is a beauty lit shot. And I oh, that's perfect. Look at that. Right? She looks right into the camera. She's got that stare. She's got that gray, those great green eyes. Right? They just suck you right in. That's a photo that would just bring you right into it. Okay? Um, okay. Now what? Oh, we have, we have a few more minutes. Good. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. Up your head, swing, yeah, right straight in that way a little bit. There we go. Perfect. What do we think? Yeah, I, I love that kind of light. It's a fantastic light, especially on, on the female form, the female face. For men, uh, men are a little more rugged looking, right? <laughs> like me, I would, be, I would be tough under that light because you would see a lot of things you really don't want to. But on someone like Rochelle, the beauty shot is absolutely perfect, okay? We have a key light, we have a, a short hair light that you don't really see because I've gone so tight on the head shot, all right? And also, um, I clipped her on the top, but I don't care. Look at that. I am totally good with that. If I had a little more room to work, I would raise my light up a touch and grab more of her top of her head, okay? But I don't have a lot of room to work. Um, so I think we have some success here. What do you guys say? Yeah. All right, good. Hang on. We'll do one more lighting look, and then we'll, do the, we'll wrap it up and do the q and I'll give you guys an extra few minutes for that, okay? All right. So let's just say, hmm, I'll take that from you, hon. Oh, thank you. Is this pepperoni on this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, hop back just maybe a foot or so. That's good. Thank you, hon. Let's go to the regular portrait with, um, with the softbox. So that way we can see some of the differences in the quality of the light with the softbox as compared to just the umbrella, all right? I like the umbrellas that they give you because they're white inside and they're creamy. Right? That light was really beautiful and creamy. And I haven't really done anything. All, what have we done? We've adjusted our exposure a little bit. We've adjusted our power up and down a little bit. We did that uh, collapsed umbrella at the same power setting. We just adjusted our aperture for a correct exposure. That's a great technique. Take that one to the bank. That's a really a great technique, the collapsed umbrella. Okay, so we'll do a little bit of softbox. No, I know what I want to do. I know what I want to do. I'm going to put you right up against the background again. Yeah. We're going to turn this light off. Get this out of the way. So it's not in the way. As close as you can, go to the backdrop. Yeah, give me something. Got it. Can you see on See how good I am at that? <laughs> Look at that, right? It was awesome. Okay. You have a small light source here. This is a small softbox. So I want to try and light a lot of her body. Okay. Now if I raise my light in the traditional style where I'm going uphill and shoot aiming downhill, I'm going to get some fall off down on the bottom. I kind of don't want that fall off. Oh, come on. Wake up. There we go. I don't want that fall off. I want to try and get as much of the body as I can. So I'm going to get away from that traditional portrait setting, and I'm going to lower my light and flatten my light out a little bit. OK, so see where my light is here? Where's my coverage? I'm about at her midsection, and my coverage is here. Got it? The light will be a, a touch flat on her face. Your shadows will not be the same as if you're lighting uh, from a, a corner and coming across. Let's see what we get. All right, I'm still at F11. OK, not so bad. Not so great, not so bad. What do we think? A little dark, so we have to open up our exposure or push our power up. Still a little, I like the shadow on the side. I do like the shadow on the side. You can see the fall off happening though, top and bottom. Right? You can totally see that with such a small light source. What we're going to do is we're going to 
flatten this out a little bit more and bring this almost flat into her. And I'm going to open the aperture up. Let's go to eight. Let's stick with eight so we have plenty of depth of field. All right. And then we'll adjust power from there. Perfect. Much better. Much, much better. All right. I still think I want to bring up the power. What do you guys say? Yeah. Maybe um, how much? Two thirds of a stop? Half a stop? One, two, three. I'm at 6.6. .6. I adjusted my light right from here. Okay. Oh, I like that. I totally like that. I like that I've gotten almost a full body shot, well lit from top to bottom of the frame with a small light source. All right. For me professionally, I really like. I really like that. I would probably raise my light up just a little bit and tilt it down to get some of that shadow instead of it going up and across, maybe going down and across a little bit. So let's give that one a shot. Let's raise this up just a touch. Aim this down just a bit. All right, we'll get that shadow moving uh, to one way. All right, this almost looks like she's uplit, right? Kind of that horror lighting, that Frankenstein lighting from underneath. But I do like it. It's a different look, something I've not really um, done. So let's see what we get now. Much better. Much, much better. Now that shadow is not going above her head too high, it's literally coming down, but I still have good coverage top to bottom on my light source. I've done this with a very small softbox. Take one or two more, hon. Huh? What do we say? That's Ooh. awesome. That's <laughs> 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 uh. right. That right. That's simple and easy. Okay. The shadows for me are a little iffy. I may adjust my light a little bit more up or down depending on what I'm after or what my client might be after. But that's something really get cool and interesting that you can do. Okay, that's just a different look with a smaller, so a smaller light source. And again, I haven't used anything that came out that has not come out of the bag that I dragged with me for an hour and a half on the train. Okay, so I'm on the train for an hour and a half with a camera bag, a couple of lenses, my bag of two lights, everything that came with my kit, and look at the work we just did. All right? Okay, so you want to figure out where to put your key light, right? Where to put your main light, okay? The traditional position is roughly 45 degrees off of your subject and about 45 degrees aiming back down. Sometimes that's hard to figure out or hard to realize from the point of the model, okay? Or your subject or your corporate headshot or whoever. So jump right into the middle of the aisle right there, hon. So put your, to figure this out, if you're, even if you're just beginning or need a refresher, to figure this out, get into a square room, bedroom, bathroom, whatever. And in the middle of that room is where you stand. And then you point to where the walls meet the ceiling. Over there. <laughs> you're doing it wrong. <laughs> OK, what you want to do is this. Oh, see, that's, that's how you do it. So that's roughly 45 degrees off axis of your subject, okay, both ways. Off 45 degrees this way and 45 degrees back down. It's a great way for you to visualize from where your subject is sitting. And then once you get that, then you back away and you say, okay, I can walk up to my subject. Come on back over here, Hum, would you please? And I can go to my subject and I'm going to set my key light roughly 45 degrees by 45 degrees. Now I'm going to do this just by eye, right to about there. OK, I'm roughly 45 degrees this way, maybe 40 to 45 degrees down. I have to go down a little bit more, right about to there. Now what I want you to do is point to where the wall meets the ceiling in that corner. Where's my key light? Look at that. OK, that's a great way to learn how to set your key light. All right, another great thing to do, another great tip, go to a beauty supply. And I tell this to everybody, and I hope you all do it, because it's so inexpensive. 
buy yourself a styrofoam head. And this is what the, the beauticians use when they're figuring out how to cut hair and do makeup, right? And for $5, you go and you bring this home and you set this on your table. And then you set your light to that. And then you can shoot the styrofoam head without having the problem of having your husband or your significant other sit for you because he doesn't want to be there or paying someone like Rochelle, right? But what's going to happen is you're going to try finally figure out light, how it interacts with your subject. You'll begin to realize it. And then once you realize it, then you hire Rochelle because you don't want photos of styrofoam heads anymore. You want photos of real people that you can use to build your portfolio, okay? And when you build your portfolio, people start calling you for work, right? Yeah. Yes, because I, I specifically asked for Rochelle today. I texted her, are you available this day? And she said, yes. I said, you're hired, come in, done, okay? Find people that you like to work with and work with them often, all right, and build that portfolio. I have a lot of people I work with a lot that I really enjoy. And you get to know that person and you get to work with them and have some fun. Okay? If, a, if someone comes to you uh, for a shoot and they ask you, should I bring heels, your answer is automatically yes. yes. Watch this. Come over here and some more into the light, hon. I want you to watch her overall demeanor. I want you to watch her shoulders. She's standing flat on her feet. She's wearing sandals. Now go up as if you're wearing, look what that did to her. All right? <laughs> it completely changed how she looks. All right? You can take one leg. Go, if you take one leg and sweep it in front of the other, you can change everything just by moving one leg forward or backward. All right? Get those legs up, shoulders back, right? And it's a completely different look just by wearing shoes. Um, but that's about it. It's pretty amazing. If you guys are looking for strobe light, right there. All right. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, B&H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help.